My name is Nola Kate Seymour. I am the chair of the Vancouver City Planning Commission, and I'm delighted to be welcoming you to the Rethinking the Region event today. Um, we'll hear from Anthony and Peter from SFU in just a, a few minutes. Um, my um, job was to have been uh, to introduce Kishelem, who is going to do a First Nations welcome. And uh, rather than uh, wait for him, we're going to uh, carry on. But I want to start by acknowledging that we're meeting on the unceded uh, traditional lands of the Coast Salish people, including the Musqueam, the Squamish, and the Slaytooth. Um, also, my Indian name, my honorific Indian name, is Standing Tall Thunderbird Spirit Woman. <laughs> so I feel like it's okay for me to say this. <laughs> Although we're... Um, it was a Cree honorific name, so it's not from an unceded territory. Um, the role of the uh, Planning Commission is to advise the mayor and council on matters that affect the future of the city. When we started with um, Anthony to talk about jointly uh, doing something for the rethinking the region, we actually realized that one of the big issues that we're interested in as the Planning Commission is public participation. And the irony that Greater Vancouver does public participation really well in comparison to other places in the world. And yet, boy, do we complain about it. <laughs> so it seemed like there was a gap between people's visceral experience and, uh, and what we actually talk about and do, and do uh, very well. I say that because I was the head of the International Center for Sustainable Cities, so I have seen uh, the way uh, local governments operate all over the world. So today's session is an opportunity to focus on what really works. We know that there are some case examples within the region and within the city, and in Seattle. So that's why we've uh, brought together the people we have with this program. I won't say anything more. I'll turn it over to Anthony. Thank you. Good morning, uh, everyone. I'd like to uh, add my thanks and welcome to uh, each of you for devoting uh, the uh, better part of your Saturday to joining us for the fifth workshop on rethinking the region that uh, SFU Urban Studies has uh, sponsored. And in a moment you'll hear more about uh, SFU Urban Studies, but let me just focus on the workshop uh, goals and uh, aspirations uh, for uh, today, and a few housekeeping or logistical matters uh, as well. Let me actually start with the logistics. Uh, as you can see, um, the first part, including the keynote and the question and answer, are going to be uh, recorded for posterity and uh, will be available uh, on the uh, Vancouver City Planning Commission and the SFU Urban Studies website. Um, and that will include all of your participation if you uh, have it and um, occasional audience uh, shots uh, in the room. So if anyone uh, is in the uh, uh, Citizen Advisory uh, uh, Protection Program then needs to be incognito, <laughs> just keep that uh, in mind uh, that you uh, are going to be uh, publicly uh, seen here. Uh, and um, that also means if you were planning to bootleg your own video uh, of this event, uh, there's no need because we'll have a professional quality one uh, uh, there. But feel free to uh, tweet uh, or otherwise communicate your uh, uh, thoughts about it as the day uh, goes on and um, uh, also to share your uh, uh, thoughts with one another at the breaks and the lunch and uh, in our discussions uh, after the keynote in each, uh, each panel. There's uh, thousands of people uh, across uh, this region who uh, devote uh, lots of uh, uh, nights, evenings, and uh, weekends, and sometimes uh, business hours as well, to uh, deliberating and advising local governments uh, on uh, a wide range, a huge number of different uh, topics from very specialized uh, planning and uh, uh, spatial uh, uh, design and development to um, 
identities and community inclusion and engagement uh, across the region. And it seems uh, to, uh, it seemed to us, both at Urban Studies and at the Planning Commission, that taking a, a day to reflect and understand uh, what uh, we're up to and what we uh, are aspiring to with this type of citizen advisory activity would be a, a good use of uh, a Saturday uh, in June. Maybe in July, not as much, but it's still not sunny uh, out there, at least it's not raining, and uh, we thought that today's uh, reflections could help um, to uh, get some perspective and uh, think about how well it's working, this um, current model or models of citizen uh, advisory input to uh, local government, to think about who's involved, to think about the possibilities for making these uh, bodies uh, work better, uh, to be more effective, to be more accountable, to be more representative, to um, capture the diversity of voices uh, uh, on local government uh, that um, uh, should be uh, uh, listened to uh, in policy making, rather than just amplifying the ones that uh, would otherwise uh, make themselves known uh, uh, even if whether or not there were these uh, advisory bodies. So I hope that each of you will uh, help uh, us understand that better. We um, are taking a regional, Cascadia regional perspective. We have uh, colleagues for the first time in history from the uh, Seattle Planning Commission, our counterpart uh, just uh, down Puget Sound, uh, uh, joining us today, and you'll be hearing from them. And we also have the Department of Neighborhoods uh, in Seattle uh, staff joining us uh, today. And you, we'll have a panel that may help even by showing a, a contrast and differences in the way that uh, uh, similar issues are handled uh, might help us think about what uh, we might do differently or better or uh, what we might uh, keep uh, that we like uh, about the way we do things. So that'll be uh, part of uh, the effort and of course uh, we'll have people across uh, Metro Vancouver as well. This is uh, located uh, in Vancouver's uh, City Hall but it is not a Vancouver centered uh, event by, by any means. I hope uh, that we will get perspectives from across uh, the region. So on the logistical uh, front, please remember to turn off your uh, noisemakers uh, at this point, uh, any pagers, uh, phones, or other devices. Um, you may have already seen our washrooms uh, are located directly across uh, the way. We have little breakout rooms, which may be uh, helpful when uh, it's lunchtime, if you prefer to uh, have a place to put your sandwich and drinks, although you can also, depending on the weather, feel free to take it out uh, to the uh, gardens uh, on the north side of City Hall uh, as well. Um, and you heard already once uh, that I will be uh, using this uh, audio signal uh, to signal uh, time to reconvene. It'll also come in uh, handy in case we have a, a seismic event uh, during the uh, day, which hopefully won't happen, but we are prepared uh, for every eventuality here. So it's uh, my great pleasure to uh, introduce uh, the director of uh, Urban Studies Program, uh, Peter Hall. Great. Thank you very much, Anthony, and uh, thank you all for coming. Particular welcome to our... Uh, friends and neighbors from uh, the United States, from uh, upstate New York, uh, Dr. Nabachi, great pleasure to have you here, and our, our friends from uh, the Cascadia region. Um, this is the fifth um, in a series of uh, workshops that we've held um, on regional issues. Uh, we've had previous uh, forums around regional governance, around transportation, housing, 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 um, uh, and, and, and it was just a, a great pleasure when Anthony came and said he'd like to do a session on um, citizens advisory boards. Um, take off the urban studies hats for a moment. I serve on the uh, New Westminster Advisory Planning Commission uh, and um, it's a wonderful opportunity Tuesday evening once a month um, to get together with some colleagues and, and learn about um, parking and transportation and land use issues um, uh, that, that confront the community. And, and yes, sometimes it has that character. Sometimes it is just very mundane um, kinds of issues. But um, it's a, a, a wonderful way to be involved um, in, in, in my local community. Um, and, and the first thing I learned when we started talking about this was that the commissions around the Lower Mainland are set up differently. We have uh, a little over 20 local governments 
And within planning commissions, there are important differences in the staffing and the relationship to council and in the type of agenda that's brought forward. So, and the first thing I'm going to be um, excited to learn about today is that variation and what we can learn from each other. Um, and it's particularly great to have um, some, uh, some uh, visitors from, um, from the United States here, um, where I think the tradition of um, learning experimentally and in a decentralized way is much more, much more deeply embedded in the political culture. And the second thing that I'm, I'm interested to, to learn about is that um, every meeting I learn something new. Um, and yes, I learn it from proponents, and yes, I learn it from the opponents and from staff and so on, but I, I'm also learning always from the other commissioners and their lawyers and uh, land use planners and design professionals. They're not average Joe citizens, and yet we're called upon to be average Joe citizens in the input that we give. So I think, um, you know, there's a question that we're going to be asking ourselves today. Who gets to be part of these advisory boards, and, and, and who exactly do we represent, and what voices are included, and, and what voices are excluded in, 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 in the way we set up our advisory commissions. And the, th the third thing that I'm excited to learn about today um, uh, is that uh, for our out-of-town guests, there was a very hot political issue in, in Vancouver this last week around a redevelopment uh, proposal in Chinatown. And uh, there was a pushback from, um, from the community um, against that. And it, and it was, in the end, it was council voted, voted it down. I, I do have to ask myself, as, as a member of a commission, do we just endorse the decisions council would have made anyway? Do we just give them cover when they want to make an unpopular decision? Um, or do we shape our cities in more profound ways? And so I'm really looking forward to talking about these today and, uh, and, and to learning, uh, learning with you about these topics. I, I, I want to thank, first of all, the Vancouver City Planning Commission, our partners today. Um, it's been wonderful to work with Nola Kate um, and uh, Yuri Artebis is somewhere and Karen Krangle. Thank you very much. Um, thank you so much to Anthony for, um, for pulling this together. Um, and, uh, and to um, the, the coordinator, um, a recent graduate of our program, uh, Karen Sawatsky, in the back there. Thank you so much. Thanks to all the presenters, everyone who's going to get up and speak today. Um, thanks to our student volunteers um, for, for helping make things run smoothly. And finally, um, thank you to the funders um, uh, of today. This is made possible by an endowment from the Real Estate Foundation of British Columbia and the Fraser Real Estate Board. They um, uh, gave us a generous endowment that we use to fund this kind of event and other enrichment events in the, in the program. So thank you to them. Thank you to everyone for being here. I'm really looking forward to the day.